I remember specifically saying when I listened to Dear You, which was the Jawbreaker major label record, fuck this band. Yeah. Fuck this Nirvana bullshit is my oh, quote. Yeah, I, I was that. I was like 17 or 18 years old. And now I'm like, God. So when I meet those kids and they're like, man, fuck you, like you're a sellout in the tour bus. I'm like, I used to be just like you. Just like you. And they're like, uh uh. I'm like, yeah, dude. You're gonna be just like me. Don't worry about it. If we were the Bones Brigade, are you Mike McGill? No, you're Tony Hawk. This is Tony Hawk. <laughs> one of you guys is Guerrero. I don't know which one. Well, it's either it's either Tommy Guerrero or Steve Caballero. We're both Browns. So. You're Steve Caballero. Yeah, Steve yeah, Caballero, yeah, Tommy Steve Guerrero. Guerrero. You have more gray hair than I do, so you get to be Lance. Yeah. All right, I'm Lance Mountain. You're Lance Mountain. Lance Mountain. I'm Tony Hawk. Uh, Steve Caballero. Yeah. Tommy Guerrero. Tommy. Tony Guerrero. Tony <laughs> <laughs> sorry, McGill. Yeah. Um, sorry. He's a merch guy. He's an inventor, though, so. I started skating and I lived in Albuquerque for a couple of years. My mom was going to college there. I just hung, I went to this school that basically was like Degrassi Junior High. Like we had like skinheads and kids with mohawks and cholos and like, when I got there I sort of, it was the first time I ever felt kind of like, like oh fuck, I totally get these people. And it was just this really natural thing where it's like, the people that I hung out with that were cool, um, they gave me my first like, they gave me a Subhumans record. You know, Cradle to the Grave, and then the next thing was like, we gotta go to the skate shop and, and get you a board. And I would save, and I saved, and I saved, and I got a, a skateboard, and it was totally hand in hand. The first thing I remember was one of my close friends got Future Primitive. And I remember just my mind just going, oh my god. And for my birthday, my mom got me my first pro board. It was a Mark Rogowski. And I rode that thing till it was probably like that big. <laughs> I really lucked out because I just kind of came across my uncle's board. I think my dad explained to me how it worked. So I would first I would like buttboard a little bit and then I just kind of started skating. And I don't know, I just I just got into it and then it became my life. It got sponsored by Acme when I was like, maybe I was 16. We turned our whole backyard into, my parents were digging a pool or something, and I said, well, what are you gonna do with all that dirt that's coming out of the pool? And like, well, I was taking it away, and we lived in the woods, and it was this huge ass slope. So they leveled out this, this huge decline, made this huge island, which I then built a mini ramp that was like, it was like four feet, tall, 20 feet wide, that spined into a five foot tall here, that then went into a three foot over here. So that was our lives. I mean, we just lived in my house for weekends and fuck the pool. I didn't care about the pool. Houston intimidated the crap. I remember uh, for, I was NSA and I, I made it to the finals and I found out that the finals were in Houston and I was like, I'm not going. Like, I'm just, I, I don't want to, like everyone I'm gonna skate against is just gonna snake me into the wall so hardcore. Like, cause I knew how, I knew how intense that city was and how it was like, they had their thing, you know? And when I went, I was like, okay, this is like the best I'll ever do. I, this is, that was my I made it moment, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, awesome, I, I know I'm not gonna be pro, but this is, this is sweet. I remember the first time I got reviewed in the music section of Thrasher and it was like, like success. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. That's like one of the ones where you're like, yeah, it's a big deal. It was a pipeline for, I mean, if now realizing what you can do as, as like a, a record label or a whatever, like if you got your band in there, it's like instantly this huge community of, of people that would pick it up and listen to it. It's a trust too, because you know. Yeah, it's like approved, oh, right? So yeah, funny. yeah, it's approved. You got a stamp. I think the yeah. thing that I always liked about skateboarding um, and punk rock is that there, it wasn't you weren't judged as like a winner or a loser you know unless you went to contests or whatever but for me it was like I was never good um, but I was always part of the gang and I could go skate with everybody and I could go hang out and then same thing happened with bands I played in bands but I wasn't good I just 
it was acceptable to be who you were. And I think that that, that combination sort of gave me the, the license to do what I've done for a life now. My whole life I've been doing playing a band since I was 12 and skating since I was 11. I, I think some, I mean just in the world of physics sort of, to create you have to destroy. I think you have to break down parts of yourself in order to sort of expel what you're trying to create. To me you're never more drained than the end of a studio like writing day. We always say our brain hurts, that's like at the end of a day when you can't do it anymore. Like, it's like you're making up a map, you know what I mean? So like every time you go this way, you have to remember how you got there because when you get to the end of that, you need to go back because that's not where you wanted to get. And you do that all day, like a million times a minute. We're gonna do this for a while. For skating, it's like you're being credited with making a trick and you're trying and you're like, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Why can't I get it? But at the end the of the day, it's thing. art. Yeah, it's, it's your art. creative I mean, process. if you're a runner, Every day your job is to run as fast as you can. They're trying to hit a mark. Whereas I think if you're in a band or, or skateboarding or BMX, et cetera, is like, the goal isn't to get four seconds faster, it's to be cool. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? You just want to do something off, cool. Yeah. Pull something For off. yourself or for everyone, or you want to get that applause at the end of your run. You know, like you want to stoke everybody to be stoked. Same thing with music, you know? I've never been in a band with somebody who pushed me harder than I pushed myself. You know, and I think that's why I've been in these bands. Like now I do a bunch of other stuff in life besides music or whatever. And you have these like companies and you, that people work for you and stuff. And it's like, I'm, I dr drill people into the ground with criticism constantly. So when you see that, it's like a whole different appreciation of like these dudes around me. So you're like, why can't you get this right? Why can't you get this right? Like, why don't you want to get this right? You know what I mean? And I think that's what you learn coming from this, this scene for sure. We played main stage Coachella in 2004, and we played right before um, the Pixies reunion. So it was like Sparta, Pixies, Radiohead. In that group, there's a lot of people that I admire a lot. Surfer Rosa is probably the third record I owned as a, as a punk rock kid or whatever. You know, when we were walking off stage, I went by some of the guys in the Pixies who I've never met before, but, and I was like, oh, cool, man, this is gonna be awesome. And I walked around, and Tony Hawk was on a golf cart, and I was like, oh! And that, like, that's when I realized what I was doing. It was the first time I think I recognized how much those guys are right. legendary to me and like yeah, untouchable because totally. I freaked out.